Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's Bo again. Um, so people are mad <laughs> about how I'm using Elf on the Shelf to address social issues. I see it in the uh, shares of the Facebook posts. I can read the comment sections. And uh, it's funny to me because it comes on the heels of that feminism video and everybody's saying that one of the reasons everybody's mad at feminists is because they inject themselves into comic books and address social issues. Okay. So let's talk about comic books tonight. I know that seems weird. I didn't read uh, many when I was a kid. The only two I read with any regularity were Punisher and G.I. Joe. Go figure. Um, and if there are two comic books that are completely masculine themed and have absolutely no room for social issues or feminism, it's those two. What's Punisher about? Right now, somebody's saying, well, it's a guy whose family gets murdered and then he goes on the warpath looking for vengeance and punishing criminals. It's one way to look at it. Another way is that he's a vet from Vietnam, comes back, he suffered the trauma of war, all he wants to do is spend time with his family. They get gunned down, so he suffers another trauma, so he goes to what he knows. It's almost like the entire series is actually about how certain types of trauma elicit patterns of behavior that can't be turned off. Now, that's really, I mean, that would especially be true if, like, that character had some severe psychological issues, nightmares, stuff like that, throughout the entire series. It's almost like that comic is about PTSD or other kinds of trauma. What about G.I. Joe? Uh, who's, the, <laughs> who's the only competent person on the Cobra side? Baroness, the female. What about the women in G.I. Joe? In the, on the good guy side. All pretty strong women, right? Don't find a lot of weak women there. Feminism is actually a very strong undercurrent in it. Extremely strong. And they address social issues throughout the entire series. Um, and it's funny, you know, because in the 80s there was the cartoon that everybody watched. And a lot of people write it off as Cold War propaganda. And if you pay attention, <laughs> those writers, extremely anti-establishment. Um, Cobra worked with indigenous groups, accepted people of all ethnicities, every socioeconomic class from the white trash in, in, in the swamps of Louisiana to the uh, European aristocracy. Their goals included stuff like ending the Federal Reserve, embracing renewable energy, they embraced science of all kinds. Um, they actually used the bad guys to address a lot of social issues in, 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 in the cartoon. And then the reboot, G.I. <laughs> Joe Renegades, um, the G.I. Joe team is now outlaws because the legal system has failed. And their opponent, Cobra, is now no longer a terrorist organization. It's a defense contracting firm. If you pay attention, that's Halliburton always addressing social issues. What about X-Men? I never read it with any kind of regularity, but I know enough about it to know that the civil rights of the mutants are central to the plot, so much so that there's a lot of people that think it's an allegory for being gay. Um, and that there's another group of people who think it's an allegory for the American civil rights movement because there was the group that wants to be militant and the group that wants to play within the rules. I, I don't see why it couldn't be both, uh, but I haven't read that. I don't, I don't know the details to the story. What about the granddaddy of them all? Superman. <laughs> the refugee alien living under a false identity, taken at an American job. Goes to the theories of the time that immigrants were the bravest and boldest of their village. They were people that would not settle for a substandard life and would risk everything in the pursuit of freedom and opportunity. And that they made the country better. Um, yeah, guys. <laughs> Social issues have always been in comics. You were just too dense to catch it. It's always been there. The reason you're noticing now is because the social issues being addressed are striking at the heart 
of the comic book industry's core audience, which is white males. You know, if you have a priv privilege for so long, you start to lose it, it feels like oppression. It's not. There is no tyrannical feminist regime coming for you. So, yeah, I'm using Elf on the Shelf in a way that I'm certain the creators did not intend. That is true. Um, but at the same time, the responses, man, I love it. It cracks me up. <laughs> you guys, you come to the page, and y'all are all internet tough guys. I, I, I would stay and fix my country. I'd fight the gangs. Meanwhile, you're having a mental breakdown over two plastic characters because suddenly they're named. Those two characters are now <laughs> more human than the actual humans who are going through this down at the border because you can't simply write them off as illegals. That in itself is social commentary about the state of this country. Two chunks of plastic have had more of an impact than the actual stories of people who underwent through, who went through some pretty horrible things. And now here's the part where this is going to get really messed up. Libertad and Esperanza, that's a true story. That's a true story. There's uh, obviously been some changes. Um, their names and the inciting incident, that, that's changed. But this, this is more or less a very true story. This is what happens on a daily basis. Anyway, it's just a thought. Y'all uh, have a good night.